now um, many are going in their own paths even though you know sambo in many ways is judo but jujitsu in many ways is judo uh, how do you feel and i know sambo is your childhood love your life love uh, basically so how do you feel now uh, ju uh sambo i'm sorry is um, in many ways better than judo or it has something to offer that's not in judo anymore when it comes to technique to mentality i know the gripping is different there's all sorts of rules that are different so how do you feel now sambo uh, can provide something for grapplers uh, great question shari so number one a lot of people call uh, a, a sambo russian judo which is only posh it's not untrue vasilia shepkov right uh, the founder was the first Russian uh, black belt in Kodokan. So it is, uh, it's not necessarily untrue, but due to uh, uh, so many years to be its own sport, research and development and, and certain tendencies, uh, calling it uh, Russian judo is not entirely accurate. It's only partially true. You know, um, my favorite metaphor, my favorite anecdote, uh, you try to explain to an Eskimo what a uh, giraffe is, right? Anytime it's a mammal, it eats grass or whatever and drinks milk, it's got hoofs. So all Eskimo can uh, think about it because of his point of view and knowledge is like a weird caribou, right? He's like, oh, it's okay, it's a caribou with, you know, with long neck. Yes and yes and no. So unless Eskimo comes and sees giraffe for himself, you know, in somewhere in a zoo, he would never know what it's like. Same thing with Sambo. Yes, it's partially correct. It's Russian judo. But because of impl uh, implementation of uh, different uh, uh, folk wrestling styles, Chida Oba, uh, Hapsagai, Kurash, all that stuff. We have a lot of like uh, this unique, funky entries and, and weird grips. Although the main core of the curriculum in Sambo is pretty much like judo. You know, whatever you can see in judo, minus the chokes, you can see in Sambo as well. But whatever you see in Sambo, you don't often see in judo, you know. And uh, so the main principle uh, and uh, uh, judo, old school judo with leg grabs was the closest cousin to Sambo. More so than jujitsu, even you know what I'm saying. So sometimes you say I compete in sambo judo in, in one breath back in the day until the rules completely change. Mm. Um, and uh, uh, sambo did adapt a bit of a picture of a judo. So a judo fight is usually a little bit shorter because the criteria for ipon is uh, more loose, right? In sambo, the only way to score ipon as far as throw goes is to throw somebody flat on their back and remain standing. When judo, you don't have to, right? So it's already like you know a little bit hotter. However, uh, um, uh, Sambo's tech, technical victory, you know, uh, they, they, uh, it used to be 12 points. So I have to outpoint my opponent 12 points or more uh, to score clean victory, other than a legal submission or, you know, or clean throw. Uh, but now they dropped it to eight points. So uh, Sambo became a little bit closer to judo yet again. You know, like mm -hmm. uh, you basically have to throw somebody with Koshi Guruma and pin and, and you win. But the main philosophical difference, in a nutshell, and I've said it so many times, uh, Japan is a Confucianist country. They're all about uh, respecting elders, following the rules, and dogma, right? And sometimes it gets a little bit com comical. Like, for example, uh, Inoue, right? Inoue, uh, uh, whenever he teaches his uchimata, he teaches, like, uh, whenever he grabs lapel, he teaches to look at the clock or whatever and a fist up. But when you look at him compete, his elbow is up, you know? And I'm like, Right, as it's recording again, sorry for the interruption. You were talking about you know his elbow and he yeah. teaches it. To, uh, so in Japan, due to their like respect and restrictions, uh, they would teach certain way. Oh, also to Gari, for example, right? Also to Gari teaches you to lunge. Uh, I'm talking right versus right. Uh, you have a right-handed grip. You lunge with your left leg to apply kazushi and swing your right leg. But whenever you look at people uh, who do who do osoto, nobody does it like that. They usually start with a pinched headlock, you know. So there is subtle differences in the way uh, judo is taught and judo is applied. So what I'm saying often in Japan is like Tayatoshi is done this way. No matter if you're tall, short, fat, skinny, ugly, whatever, that's how you do Tayatoshi. And, and I've seen it like over and over again. Uh, 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 New Jersey and New York where I used to live was heavy on judo. So I've been around. Uh, but meanwhile, in Sambo, we're like, you know what? Because your shoulder is bummed, you cannot do Tayatoshi this way. Let's adjust your grip. So long the main principles are the same, uh, change of grip is okay. So uh, in Judo, they try to tailor athlete to the technique. And in Sambo, we try to tailor technique to the athlete. And that's the difference in a nutshell. Never mind the te technical differences and the names or whatever and the scoring system. But as far as throws and approach, 
that's what it is. Hmm. That I've never heard that before. That's so interesting because yeah. it's a constant debate, but we've never looked at it from the Sambo way of uh, Sambo perception because we always say, you know, it's it's the Nagekomi form, but then, you know, when you go into Randori, uh, you adjust it according to your body. It's like, it's up to you to do it. For example, um, the whole Uchimata Hanegoshi debate. <laughs> Like, what is that? Why are they doing that? Like, okay, it's the principles of the technique, how to lift, how to position yourself correctly, and also the, the bent leg. Yeah. Uh, it's mostly to protect your uke, their groin. You know, you want to be friends with them after, you know, 20 nagekomi or after the, the class. So I understand that. I understand their point of view. And, of course, the basics will always be there. But, uh, again, as you said, everyone is different. Maybe I have a long torso, short legs. Maybe I have very long legs very short stomach uh or I, i'm fat i'm i have a narrow shoulders or wide shoulders i i, I released the uh, osotogari course like uh, last year and i posted it on uh, reddit or whatever trying to sell and mm -hmm. somebody commented on me not pointing my toes down when i apply sweeping action and they give me like you know the story and and why but i'm like dude uh, i come from sambo background we wear wrestling shoes i cannot point my toes and, and this technique of Sotogari exists in literally every grappling art. It exists in Mongolian wrestling where you wear boots. It's even harder to point your toe and they still manage to make it work. So I'm not chasing dogma or whatever or some kind of esoteric explanation. Right. Uh, I always say I'm not a purist. So long you get the guy down, man, you get the mm -hmm. job done. Of course, if it's done in a pretty way, it's awesome. But uh, me, I'm always trying to adopt uh, technique to the athlete, not the athlete to technique. Mm. I mean, yeah, if, I often talk about self-defense and if something happens on the streets, most likely I'm wearing shoes. So yes. yeah, that's one thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, when it comes to the gripping, I noticed, you know, you can hold the pistol grip all you want in Sambo, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Correct. putting your thumbs in uh, as dangerous as it is, uh, cross gripping, you can maintain it. Now in judo, especially now with the IJF and how they want to, um, I would say the direction they're taking judo in, Anything that can stall something, like if I um, do like a cross grip in the stand up, uh, it can really bother you. And at the same time, it's not as easy for me to throw. So it can really stall the game. So I'm either penalized or I have to do it right now, like a cross grip or soto. Uh, many do it and it's a very effective technique. But in terms of holding it, uh, sambo is a completely different game when it comes to the grips as well. Yes. Absolutely. Well, um, uh, the, 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 there is a restriction that goes uh, all the way across the border, grabbing sleep with your four fingers on the inside. You cannot do it in either Sambo Judo or Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. um, also, in Sambo, you cannot grab the tassels of the belt, you know, the little uh, mm, The skirt, yeah. Yeah. And you cannot grab the skirt of the jacket, which also a bit of a moot point because Sambo jacket has uh, uh, holes for the belt and you cannot undo your bottom lapel and strangle somebody with a bravo chop or something like that, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's largely a, a moot point. But other than not grabbing the skirt of the jacket and the tassels of the belt, uh, there is no restriction to grips. You can grab anywhere you want for as long as you please. Oh, okay. I, I, there, there is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of uh, penalties in Sambo and you do get penalized for non-combativity pretty fast to make sport exciting, an Olympic uh, a candidate or whatever. Uh, but there is no restrictions on gripping. Mm. But... Uh... Like the whole, the, the thing with the IGF grip and go and, uh, or grip and attack, like the pistol attack, wrist attack, uh, skirts, obviously not the belt, not, but, um, uh, the, the non-combativity, how does it come in, in Sambo? Is it just someone pushing away or gripping yeah. and not attacking it, or? It's like, uh, uh, we usually as referees, we are recommended to start penalizing people after one minute. And uh, sometimes it's kind of hard. Sometimes both people non-combative and then you give warning. You give two warnings. You, you show these two gestures to each athlete. But sometimes you see one tries to apply grips and throws and like push in the action. And the other one kind of like runs around. And uh, mm. for the most part, non-combativity is, is easily detectable. It's non-gripping and backing out pretty much, you know, you know, in a layman's terms. Uh, okay. And now when it comes to the dangers, there is like... <sighs> The whole leg grab thing for me, if it's not dangerous, let's do it. For sure. Um, yes, like I'm all for leg grabs. Even I, I train at the Kodokan, all the older generation, they say like, this is ridiculous. Even when, when we do randori, we grip legs. The Kodokan uh, Kohaku Shiai, you can grip the legs. It's for black belts only. 
Um, there's also Yuko. I'm also all for Yuko now when I understand better the quality of throws. For example, if two guys have Wazari, I'm pretty sure one, but most probably deserves a Yuko and not a Wazari. So not, they don't both deserve to go into golden score. And uh, probably it should end because one throw is probably a lot better. Like if I put you on your butt, it's very different than if I like really big, I do a big throw and then landing you on your side. Of course. But th that's another difference. In, in Judo, the score is qualifical, like, you know, excellent or good or whatever. Uh, but in Sambo, it's still quantifical. You still give out points. It's one, two or four points. Oh, okay. D yeah, d depending on uh, the uh, position uh, of the Tori, whether you mm -hmm. fall down or not. If you stay up, you score more. And then you, uh, when you fall flat on your back, it's the highest score. If you fall on your side, it's a lesser score. And if you fall on your butt, belly or shoulder, it's even less. Yeah, yeah, that's yes, definitely that's, it. That's yeah, how like you the, differentiate the quality. It's not the amplitude of rotation, like in Draco, for example, right? Mm. You get five points for a big lift. Uh, it's a blending. It could be the ugliest Kukio Toshi or like ugliest Kosoto, but if he falls flat, man, it's flat. Yeah, and I like the idea that if you if you take them down and you remain standing, which is like like peak mastery when it comes to takedowns. Yes, it, it's a clean win. Like there, there is the there is the world championship example of Inoue Kose against the Romanian. I forgot his name. He lands this Uchimata and he sends him flying flat on his back and he remains standing. That was beautiful. And yes, yes, like this this idea in Sambo that. If you land someone flat on their back while remaining standing, it, it's a clean win. Yes, I, I yeah. really All support this it, one. It, as you know, as a judoka, as a grappler, you, you know it requires superior control and skill yes. to land a throw like that. Especially one-legged throw. Like, he's on one leg. Like Uchimata, yeah, for yeah. sure. But it's called Patkhwat in... Patkhwat, yeah. Patkhwat. It's funny because we call Patkhwat two throws. Uchimata and Haragoshi. However, mm. we'll put a different uh, suffix. We'll say Padhvat Padadnu means one leg rip or Padhvat Padve, two leg rip. So one would be Jumata, two would be Haragoshi. Mm. Ah, okay. You're, you're taking two legs yeah. while yeah. the yeah. Shumata you're taking. Yeah. Okay. You're I doing line of ripping action with your leg and if mm. you go in between, it's, you know, Padadnu and if you it's do... It's one leg. Right. Yeah, two legs. Uh, I got it. Now, uh, okay, this is probably gonna... A lot of people are not gonna like this, but I'm very much against Kani Wasami. I don't care which competition, etc. It should. Kani, it should. Yeah, listen, when I was, uh, say no more. Uh, like when I was younger, I would teach everything. I would teach Uranagi, you know, uh, chest to back or whatever. I would teach jumping arm bars and I teach uh, uh, Kani Basami. But about 10 years ago, my attitude towards Kani Basami completely changed. It's prohibited in my dojo. I do not teach it and all that stuff. Like, uh, uh, I've seen way, way, way too many injuries uh, in front of my eyes with my students and almost fell a prey uh, myself. I swear to God, somebody did it to me, and if it was not me, I was able to brace myself and react correctly or whatever. But it was somebody of lesser quality grappler. I can see knee injuries, like debilitating careers. So I'm like, uh-uh, no more Kani Basami. This is one takedown. I do not teach myself. It, uh, I People should know that when you give someone the option to tap, you know, uh, Jujigitame, Kuriya Ijime, uh, any arm lock, this is very respectful in many ways because you are giving them the chance to, okay, let's stop the fight, let's reset. Yes. Kani Basami, there's not, there's, uh, that no. option does not exist. No. no. It's not <laughs> only, yes, it's debilitating, as you said, and it's, I, I want to say it's respectful, but it's incredibly irresponsible and very bad in so many ways. Yes, yeah, it's careless. Uh, and if somebody does it, like in my gym, I'll, I'll, I'll yell, I'll, I'll like, raise my voice. Uh, the thing with Kani Basami uh, is a, such a unique takedown with a lateral delivery on a knee that uh, two reactions got to be perfect. Uh, Tori's execution must be perfect and Uke's reaction. If one of them messes up, does not matter who, does not, does not, does not matter who. If either Tori uh, a reaction correctly, uh, doesn't correctly, or Uki reacts funny, it's a guaranteed injury. And it's just like, it's, it's too much, you know? Yeah, I, I saw this video. Too like, so often, yeah. I've seen it way too much. It's not like, a, if it was a single incident, I'm like, yeah, combat sport. And for the same reason, I don't allow jump in guard. I'm okay with people pulling guard, but jump in guard is uh, disallowed for that same reason. Yeah, like, if I shot for Tomoe Nage and it doesn't 
land correctly. Okay, I'm in a good guard position. Fine. But yeah, jumping guard, like these compilations done, like you see them with their knees popping. Like I saw this Kanye Basami just uh, two days ago. The sound, it's like someone shot a gun. Yeah, yeah. Your knee snapping is not a pleasant sound. Everybody just goes, ugh, everybody cringes. Yes. Now, uh, another thing. Now, this this is uh, now since we're going into more of the you know, jujitsu territory of today. Uh, the whole leg lock philosophy of Sambo is also different. R uh, torsion is not allowed. I understand because you're targeting lig ligaments at this point. But uh, how do you now you've done jujitsu as well? Yes. For how many years? Uh, I started in 1998. Okay. And, and for some, for some time, Shady, my, my, my jujitsu journey is a bit funky uh, because I saw Hicks and Gracie compete. It, it completely blew my mind. I'm like, oh my God, I love this. It, it, it looks very similar to what I do, slightly different. I love it, you know? So uh, as an OG, I got into jujitsu only because I fought. Like nowadays, people do jujitsu, do uh, sport jujitsu. But back in the day, the only reason you start doing jujitsu is when you wanted to fight MMA, you know? Yes, like you want to be like Hoyce. Yes, yes. Okay, but what's your stance on leg locks, especially today with heel hooks, um, the whole Ashi Garami battle of John Danaher, uh, the whole thing, and comparing it with, with Sambo? Okay, so the main difference in meta game for leg locks in Jujutsu versus Sambo is that uh, they often, uh, the setup, the setup often starts on the bottom. Because one of the, uh, per, that's for Danaher, I'm just regurgitating what he said. One of the main critiques for leg locks was if you start from top position inside somebody's guard and you snap back and you lose the ankle lock, you're going to lose the position, which is the dumbest argument to me ever because it goes to just about any submission. You mount it, you go for Juju Gatani, guy rolls you, you're on bottom, you lost the position. You know what I'm saying? You go for triangle, uh, guy times it, shocks your legs off his head, you know, you, you mount it now, side control. It so that's so many times. However, uh, Danaher managed to overcome that position, uh, that, that argument anyway, because most uh, uh, leg locks start from the bottom, so you're already in a bad position. If you mess up, mm. you're already there. So th that argument is uh, taken out the window. Uh, as far as, uh, uh, also in Sambo, there's no heel hooks, you know? It's a huge misconception. People think uh, we have Dorfman. heel hooks. But the only reason Sambis take to heel hooks is because we're familiar with leg locks and control. You know what I'm saying? We are... Uh, we are uh, designed, we are taught to treat a uh, leg control as a pin. You know what I'm saying? Like before I get uh, to Americana, to Udegarami, Gara I have to take you down, pass your guard, pin you, and then go. Before I get to a rear naked strangle, I have to like, you know, get you back, secure position, and then sink, then sink it in. With a priority in between being maintaining the position, the pin. And, uh, and often uh, in the early days with leg locks, people would see like Japanese fighters and they'll jump on leg locks and miss the position because they were like uh, leg lock happy. And in Sambo, we were taught, uh, also in Sambo, if you stand, if, you, if I apply a leg lock and you stand up, that's considered a defense. And referee blows the whistle. We don't say Matteo would blow whistle. And you get stood up, okay? So uh, pinning the legs and applying leg control as a pinning control uh, uh, was established due to the rules. I have to put you in a such position uh, via leg lock that you cannot stand up. You know what I'm saying? How, what, how do you pin, like, by, as you are going for a leg lock? How, how does that work? Uh, uh, so, there is many ways, for example, reaping would be probably the most uh, popular position in Sambo. And if you rip one leg, you sneak your leg under the other one and secure it, you control both legs. Like and Ashigarami. Often, yes, like Ashigarami. But like Ashigarami, your foot stops in the center, we're going all the way under. That's what they call mm. Sambo nut in America. Mm. Or very often, I can send you videos too. If you go for rolling knee bars, right, we often grab the second leg. So I'm rolling, uh, doing knee bar on the leg I intend, but with my free hand. I'll snag the second leg for the same reason, so the guy could not stand up. Or mm. when I do uh, the calf slicer from the inside, we usually grab both ankles. So in Sambo, it's been designed to pin the legs for the longest time. And mm. uh, to Jujutsu is a new common uh, sentiment, you know? Okay. Uh, and as far as my personal philosophy, I teach like this. So uh, whenever you get knee barred or arm barred, right? Uh, uh, pain settles immediately, you tap, everybody goes home safe, right? Somebody wins, somebody loses, but nobody gets hurt. The thing with heel hooks is that uh, uh, ligaments around your ankles are flexible. And in some in some instances, they are more flexible than others, but they all break eventually, you know? So somebody can take a torque uh, that's less. Somebody can take a torque that's like, you know, five degrees more, but everybody snaps in the end. So I teach heel hooks to uh, white belts from the get-go. 
and but I introduce them to culture, and the culture involves two people in the exchange, both Tori and uh, and uh, Uke. So for Tori, don't be an asshole and don't crank on a heel hook, right? You secure it, you apply it gradually, you look at your partner, you see him tap, you let go immediately. And for uh, uh, for the Uke, you must. Uh, forget all your egotistical tendencies and tap when it hurts. And moreover, uh, if I can, so m- my rule of thumb for heel, ho- for heel hooks is this. If I can move my knee, if my knee twists, I can try to spin out, right? If it's inside heel hook, I go to one way. If it's a regular heel hook, I go the other way. I'll go with the direction of the force. However, if you cannot do, if your knee does not move, tap immediately. 